this one here, and then hopefully forum later can give us some, some material. Okay, so let's go. You see a white screen, guys? You see my white screen? Guys, you hear me? Yes. Yes, do you see my yes. white screen? Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so guys, what we are going to be focusing now is, is try to, to create a program. So at the end of the day, the, the class is called Programming for Economics. So we are going to have two things, for Economics and Finance. Got it? So this means the following. I need to introduce you some simple models. I, I will present them very quickly. No, uh, I will not go in depth about the models, but I will give you an idea of what the models are doing, why do we need the models, and basically how we can program them. Got it? And then that's at the core of this class. Now, uh, economics is going to come more at the end because it's, it is more complex. I need more tools from, from MATLAB in order to start programming. But finance, we can start from the very beginning. Uh, you, you're going to see it's more, it's more straightforward. Uh, in economic terms. Now, why do we select, uh, why I have selected MATLAB? You know, I have done at the same, at a given time, at a given point in time also R, you know, but at the end, because uh, many professors, basically the ones that are looking for uh, a heavy optimization programs, a multi, multimodal programs, et cetera, they prefer MATLAB. So I, I said, okay, so I can do MATLAB. Okay, so if you're doing a PhD or you're doing some type of, of serious research, uh, you're going to be using eventually MATLAB in, in your class, and we continue with it. Okay. Now, what is interesting, guys, what I want to show you is basically something that goes from zero to a very decent level of programming. Okay. So going from zero implies that, as as any a program, guys, it is called a language. Do you agree? So MATLAB, it is a language. And what is beautiful about this language, guys, is that it's, it's almost universal now. The language can be understood by R, can be understood by Python, Python, etc. Got it? But as a language, guys, we need to learn first the language. So how many of you know another language that is not English? Nicole, Spanish? Yes, Spanish. Yi uh, Ying, Chinese? Perfect. Cameron, do you have any other language that you know? Spanish. Spanish. Perfect. Uh, Abdi, what language do you know? Uh, Arabic and my mother tongue, which is Somali. Somali. Nice. So, uh, Mafuna, what, what, what language do you have? What do you know? Uh, I would say my mother tongue and English and other African languages. Perfect. You see, guys, what is the first thing you need to learn when you do when you learn a language? When you do a lot of things in parallel, do you agree? But one of the main, the the, the 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 first thing is that you need to learn words, right? Because without words, you you really cannot start thinking about a new language. Got it? And once you learn the words, and, and you know what, this is also kind of a parallel. But you know, first you learn more words. It's the structure. Do you agree? That that's the way we do it. We learn words. And then we more or less know how they put what is an adjective, a pronoun, a subject, a verb, how is the organization, and how we can make times, etc. It is basically the same. So what we need to learn first is a couple of words, and not a couple, a lot of words, a lot of structure, and of course, here comes grammar, right? And that's what we're going to be looking to, is grammar. So we're going to see how the language understands you. And how the language is going to do, how the program is going to do whatever you want. Got it? So now what we're going to be learning, guys, is we are going to start using MATLAB in a in a in its simplest way. So we're going to use the command window. And we'll explain this in a minute. Command window. And from there, we are going to start developing our our MATLAB ability until we start creating programs. Okay, the programs in R, sorry, in MATLAB are called M files. Okay, it's like in R that the main exec executable programs is .R. In MATLAB, the programs are going to be .M, that's all. 
Make sense? And from these programs, guys, what I want from you is to go from something very simple, just create a very simple program, to a program that calls programs, to such a way that this one calls this one here, this one calls another one here, another one here, and perhaps we're gonna, this one calls also this one here, and this one can call another program that calls another programs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the, the idea, is to create a program that is able to call different programs, to use, some of them can be already built in, you know, like Python, you just call programs, but some of them can be created by you, et cetera. So this is the, the, the main goal, guys. And, and that's the beauty about having programming skills is that you can have something that calls different programs and returns different results. And of course, the use of data is crucial. Okay, so I will show you how to use data, how MATLAB or R or any other program reads data and understands data. And what is important, guys, is that the way the programs understand data is in a matrix form. Okay, so this is the first thing you need to remember. Data for, for all these programs is represented as a matrix. Got it? So a matrix or basically an array so is more gener generic. So matrix, guys, looks like this. Do you agree? Looks like an Excel. So you have data here. Perhaps you have the names of the variables here. And then basically, just this is number of rows. These are number of columns. And when you talk about arrays, guys, so we're not talking only a, 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 a n times r a matrix, but we can also think about having instead of a single matrix, we can have multiple matrices. Okay, so we're going to have an additional dimension here. This is so all these guys here is an array. So the data comes in this way. Okay, the, the data must be provided in this way. Make sense to you guys? It's like having Excel, different different types of Excel. That's all. And we're going to learn how to call them, how to play with them, how to organize them, how to clean, how to change, transpose, etc. Make sense to everyone? Say this. Oh, that's 2004, it's 2024. Okay, guys, so let's go into directly into MATLAB. Can we open MATLAB for a minute? So let me open MATLAB here. Okay, so let's wait for, for MATLAB to come. Are you with me, guys? Do you see MATLAB here? Guys, everyone is with MATLAB open. So you don't have this part here. Sorry, this part here is a different project that I, I have written, but let's forget about that. Do you have MATLAB like this, everyone? Do you have this open? You're going to work with me, guys, so you need to be ready. Okay, the, the first class is always a kind of a slow. After that, we're going to catch up. Are you with the MATLAB? So you have your MATLAB in front of you? Everyone? Cameron, Nicole? Mine's opening slowly. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's wait for a minute because I, I need you to take a look here.
Ready? Okay, guys, so the, the, the most important parts of uh, MATLAB is this command window. So we're gonna be working here. We use this one for testing. Okay, this upper part here is the editor. So here's where we write all, all our, our programs. Here you have all the variables, all the programs that I have open. Uh, the, my most recent programs pro, uh, done in, in, in MATLAB. So it's a lot of, not only programs, but data also. And then here we have a workspace that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be using soon. And here we have the a, a history of, of commands, of programs that I have been working. Got it? Makes sense to you? Okay, so what, what MATLAB does guys is always works with with variables, okay? So a variable is simply a host, we agree? It's an envelope, it's a name. So let, let's say, for example, I can I can argue, I want, I want to do something. I want to do this sugar. Sugar is gonna be a variable. And I need to store something on this variable, okay? So perhaps what I will do is, as soon as I want to distinguish between P and Q, quantity and, and price, what I can do, Q sugar, Okay, and I will say five. So basically what I'm trying to represent, the name is, is indifferent, you can name this as you want. So what I'm trying to do is that the quantity of sugar is equal to five, got it? Now what I can argue is that the price of sugar is equal to one. Now, do you see guys that every time that I write, MATLAB repeats what I'm writing? Do you see that P of sugar equal one? This is a kind of annoying, right? You don't want MATLAB to be repeating what you are doing every time. So for that, what you need to do, let's do another one, let's do Q of rice, for example, let's say 10. And if you don't want MATLAB to show, simply semicolon. Everything is going to be in memory, yeah? but just semicolon simply avoids, avoids the MATLAB to be repeating what you, what you write. You see that? Let's do a P of rice. So let's say the P of rice is $1.5. And let's do perhaps Q, plural. Let's say 50, uh, well, let's say five or three. Let's say this to be two. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm simply assigning values to variables. Agree with me? Now, one thing that you, you should be able to, to do is create a variable of variables. So for example, once I have defined each of these guys, I can define food, Q food, for, uh, Q food like the quantity of food. Simply I can say, you know what? I want to sum the quantity of sugar, I want to sum the quantity of uh, what is the other one? Rice, and I want to sign uh, to sum the quantity of fruit. Oh, what? How do you find this variable? Let me check. Uh, Q food, Q. Uh... Give me one second. So let's do, okay, let's learn one command. If you do who, you can see what variables do you have in place. Okay, so this is one word of, of MATLAB, who. And if you write whose, you're gonna see all the variables here with the, with the size, Bytes and class. Double guys is a numerical, real values. So there's who and whose. Now, if I want to see I, why I'm not able to capture this one here. Yeah, so I made a mistake in my in my definition here. Oh, yes, of course. It is not. Remember, in MATLAB, guys, the names, caps, and non-caps are completely different, OK? Here we are. Remember, guys, in, in MATLAB, caps and non caps are, are completely different.
Make sense to you guys? So we have learned two, two new commands. We have learned uh, who and whose. Make sense to you? Now, there is another thing that you, you need to learn that is called CD. Uh, this is all Windows uh, command uh, prompt. So CD guys give you gives you the, the location of where your programs are. Okay, so I'm working in this directory. Everything that I do is gonna be saved in here. Got it? So what I suggest from you for you guys is to create your own directory, your working directory. Okay, so for example, and, and what I want is to, this is 2023, so I, I don't like this one here. So what I will do is I will change this one. So one way to change this one here, Okay, so I want this to be 24. I think I have created that file. So once you do this stuff, so what I'm doing is I'm changing my directory. So I want to be working on this directory. Guys, can you create your own directory for the class? Take a minute to create your own directory. So we are going to be saving everything there. Okay, ready. So now if you do CD, you see now I'm in the in the correct directory. Are you able to do that, guys? You're checking your... You have it? Ready? Okay, guys. So let's continue moving here. So imagine that I want to save my my working directory. Okay. So just save my what I'm doing here. So what do you just save? I don't know. Let's save this one as class one, two thousand twenty-four. And then if you want to load this one here, so you what do you say is load class one. 2024. And of course, as soon as we haven't cleaned anything, we have the same. So if we want to clean everything, what we can do is we can simply clean. Oh, clear, sorry. And now you do who's, and we have nothing. 
Okay, so clear when you write clear completely independent, clear with nothing more, it cleans everything that you have created in your in your work file, in your command window. Now, if you want to, let's open now, let's do the load. Oh yeah, by the way, you just move the arrow, arrow arrows up, so you can be just looking for the, for the commands that you have used before. You see that? Can you do that? Just play with the arrows up and down. And then you can see what you have you have written before. So now we do who's and then we recover what we have done before. Make sense? So saves saves everything that you have done in the command window. Load loads what you have a uh, what you have a uh, basically saved. Mm -hmm. Agree with me, guys? Okay. Now I want to see the food part. Where's my food? Food. Yeah, food is 18, right? Guys, agree? Food is 18. Okay, now what I want you guys is to change the quantity of uh, sugar. Let's say to 12. Okay, so change Q sugar to 12 and tell me what is the new quantity of food. Of food. So you can just write the first words, a quantity, I told you sugar, right? And then press tap. So you just write Q, S, U, tap, and appears uh, the, the most likely word. Q sugar, I told you, change it to what? What number? 12. 12. Okay, and then you just change the, the Q food. You know that doesn't mean it's, it's very simple. Do you agree? So if you if you change one variable that is called by another variable, changing one variable changes the complete the complete sequence. Food, for example, that was a function of three variables, it can change automatically. Do you agree? Makes perfect sense. Okay. Another another couple of things. Sometimes you do a loop. Uh, we're going to learn that, and the loop goes infinite. So you never stop. The computer never stops. And this happens when, when you're at the beginning, starting at the beginning. So one way of stopping that is control. So you press the, con the, the, the key, the keyboard, control plus C at the same time. Control C, OK? So basically, control C. That's what you need to do. OK, not, not typing. Huh? I mean, the, 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 in the keyboard, just that. Uh, that the keyboard control plus C, and then the program is gonna stop. MATLAB is gonna stop. Now, if you type quit, we're gonna uh, simply close, we're gonna close MATLAB. Make sense to you guys? Now, MATLAB, of course, is a very powerful tool in terms of mathematical programming. So what commands do we have? The common ones, guys. So we have the sine function, for example. Now we have the cosine function. We have the tangent function. Sorry, it's tan. Oh, sorry. You know, if I want to know something about something, you just do the help. Just type help, and the help command is going to tell you what is the, the format. OK? Another thing that we use a lot is the absolute value of minus two, for example. We have the, the seal is a, what is a seal of 2.1. The ceiling, remember guys, what it does, it moves the number, no matter what decimal do you have, it rounds up to the upper integer. Okay? We have, instead of ceiling, we have a floor. It doesn't matter what number goes up, it goes always to the, to the floor. Then we have round. Of course, round follows the, the, the rules of rounding. If it's more than 0.5, it goes to the upper number. If it's lower than 0.5, it goes to the other number. So now something we're going to be using all the time also is the sine. For example, the sine of minus 2. The minus 1 implies that the sine is negative. Just take a look to the sine of 2, etc. 
Okay, so can you do the following, guys? Very quickly. Do the following. So I want you to create this function. No, sorry. I want you to create this function. Uh, y equals 3x squared plus 2c minus 4. OK? And just start with x equals 4 and c equals 3. Can you please give me y? And give me one minute, please. Ready? So what is the value of Y? Okay, guys, so what is the value here? 50. 50. Someone can confirm this number? 45. I have 45. Oh, I have two possible answers. Oh, I have 50. 50. Okay, guys, so remember it should be a, a single number. Okay, so let's go and take a look to the to MATLAB. So I said that you tell me, x is going to be equal to what? What, what was the value? Four. Four, then we have z equals what? Three. Three, perfect. And then my function was equals x squared. What was that, the function? It was three x squared. Okay, three times x to the power 2. What else? Plus 2 times z. Plus 2 times z. Plus 4, right? Oh, I thought it was minus 4. Oh, it's minus know. 4? No, no, no. I don't know. Agree with me or not, guys? So I have x equals 4, c equals 3, and if we evaluate this function on these values, my y is going to be equal to 50. Now, of course, you can change the value of x. If you just change x, imagine, guys, from 4 to 8, what is going to be the, the, the function value now? 194. And that's a beauty, right? That's a beauty about having a program. So we have done a small program. My small program is this function. And this function has as inputs x and z. If I change the inputs, my function changes. Correct? A straightforward function. This is a function already. Right? So now, can you do the following? So you do the following, guys. So this is my first one. I want you to... I want to just know the the the, the sine and fun, uh, the sine and cosine function. I want to use that. So I want to go from zero. I want to go zero point one p. So in in MATLAB p is that is our three point fourteen etc. I want zero point two times right to p etc up to 
up to P. Okay, so let's create this one here as X and just use the commas to separate them. So I want to go from zero, zero, 0 0.1 P, 0 0.2 P, 0 0.9 P and P. Okay, let's create this, this variable X. And once you have this variable X, I want you to compute Y is going to be sine of X. And let's create Z is going to be cosine of X. Oh, by the way, this is the way MATLAB understands that you, you're entering data, bracket, bracket, okay? So what I told you is going to be 0, 0 0.5 times. Pi is a MATLAB command, okay? When you write commas, basically what you're doing is you're, you're creating a, 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 a row vector. So let me copy this just many times. Do you agree? So I'm simply going from zero to pi. The pi remember is uh, the 3.1416. And then what I want to do is I want to apply these numbers. I, I want to use these numbers to create my function y that is going to be simply equal to sine of x. Not sine, sine. Do you agree? So basically I got it. This is my function sine of X. If I want Z equal cosine of X, so I have my cosine function. Later we're gonna graph them, we're gonna do beautiful stuff, got it? Now, what is the problem with this approach, guys? What is the problem with this approach? So imagine if I told you guys, I want to go from zero, okay, to pi, but I want you to increase by 0 0.01. So you're going to have basically 100 numbers. This is going to be insane to do this by hand. Do you agree? 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. It's going to be insane. So that's why all the programs have something that's called sequencing or sequences. Got it? And how the, the sequence in MATLAB works, the same is in, in R, is basically when you have sequences, guys, you simply do this. X is going to be equal 0, 2 points, a pi, for example. The issue, and let me let me delete this one here. Let me create first a simple example. So when you do zero, two points is a, this one here to ten. So this is going to do. It starts at, at zero, finishes at ten, increases by one. So this is going to create zero, one, two, up to ten. Got it? Now. The, the full command is the following is, when do you start? What is your increment? So I want to inc increase by two, for example, and when I want to stop. So what this is going to be creating is zero. The next one is going to be what? So this is the, the increment. So what is the next number? Guys, yeah, what is that? Yeah. Two, four, six, eight, and 10, do you agree? So now that this is a single, so you, we can just test this one in MATLAB. So let's take a look to, let's call this X1, yeah? X1 equals zero to 10, do you agree? Works. It's the same as X1, zero, increasing by one to 10. But I also can call this one here, instead of to uh, increasing by one, I can increase by two. 
Correct? You understand the sequencing? Good. So now I want you to create this series. This one here. Using sequences. So create your X now using sequences. Okay, you tell me guys what I write here. Tell me guys. So what is my sequence? I start where? Zero. Zero, okay. Um, Zero point one. Zero point one. Um, what else? To what? Times pi. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, if I if I do these guys, what it will do is going to be 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Indeed, it's 0 0.1 times pi. This is my, my increase. Do you agree? Guys, make sense to you? Okay, guys, make sense to you? You have replicated this stuff. Got it? Questions? When I do oh. that, it says that it's a an empty double row vector. What is that? When I type that in, it says this the one? answer one times zero empty double row vector. What is that? I don't know. Can you share your screen? Yeah. Give me one second. I will allow you to, to share. Okay, you can share your screen. Mm. Yeah, what, what you have done is, uh, no, is QQ is not that the two dots is equals. XQ oh, equals, here? yes, that's equal. Okay. So you're you're assigning a value to this x cube. Just go okay. up, up arrow and then you're gonna see that. Oh wait. I think you are you're writing something here. Perfect. Okay, guys, make sense to you? So the equals is you're assigning the value. And this is a sequence. So the sequence is this one here. Okay, guys, allow me five minutes, please, that I, I have my kid that's doing a disaster here. Give me just five minutes.
Okay, guys, are you, are you, are you around? Sorry for that, Tati, okay. So there is another way to do this. So remember what, what, what happens if I have this part here? Okay, so it goes obviously from 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So what I can do also is I can simply multiply this one times pi. Oh, sorry, not, not double. It's the same. Got it? Okay, uh, what else, guys? There is another way of doing also these type of things, guys. Uh, something that is called this is slightly different command but it's also very useful what we have is one command that is called the lean space okay so this works in the following way from to and the number of observations that we want so for example we can do lean space from zero to pi, and I want 11 observations. Got it? So let's, let's do that. And let's play with that. So let's call, uh, yeah, let's call X again. It's going to be lean space. I want to go from zero to pi, and I want 11 observations. Okay. So the beauty about this one here is that you don't need to, to add, you don't need to be thinking about this one here. What you do simply here is you simply say, how many observations do I want? I want 11. Got it? So you don't care about the, the, the increment. Make sense to you guys? Make sense? Okay, so now let's go and create, let's create, a, how do we create matrices? I, I told you already. So what we have creating a, a, a vector, guys, is always telling MATLAB, hey, MATLAB, this one here is going to be a vector. Now, if you have a row vector, so let's do, you can do two things. You just use a space, or let's use Y. You can use, for example, uh, this is Y. Five commas, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so spaces are the same as commas. So you have this one here. Now, if you want to create a column vector, uh, uh, so instead of a instead of commas, what we use, let's let's, let's call this C. You use semicolons. Okay, semicolons is to, to create a column vector. Now, of course, there is a remember, MATLAB is, is based on matrix algebra. Okay, we're going to do a lot of matrix algebra later. But what you can do, for example, is create CC equals C transpose. So the, the, the small comma on the on the top, this one here, apostrophe, simply transpose. Oh, oh wait, 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 which one is my? Yeah, so I have problems always with me, my, this one here. Are you able to do that? My keywords are kind of weird. You agree with me, guys? Okay, so now, how do we create in a vector? Uh, sorry, a matrix. Let's create a, uh, let's call this, let's call this A. And I want to create something like that. I want to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? So what we can do is we can create, it's going to be one, two, three, next column, four, five, six, eight, sorry, next row, seven, eight, nine.
Got it? So let's create another one that we can be helping. We can be working this already. Let's do, this is 10, 11, and 12. So we have two, we have one matrix and one row vector. Got it? And let's start playing with that. So how do we address elements in the matrix? So that, that's what, what I want to, to check. Okay, so the way we address elements in a matrix is with a parenthesis. So for example, I want to create A1. And from A1, I just want this position here, five. So remember MATLAB reads rows, one, two, three, and columns. So what is the, the name of this position? What, which row and which column? Two, two, right? So what I'm going to say is, you know, a1, take from A, position 2, 2. Got it? Make sense? So now, for example, guys, I want to just keep the, the second column and the third column from A. Let's call this A2. Okay, so let me write here. So what I want from you is the following. Oops, disaster. So A equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And B equals 10, 11, and 12, correct? So this is my MB. So A1 was basically position A22. Okay, so number two, I want I want you to create A2, and A2 is going to be equal to 2, 5, 8, 3, 6, 9. Okay? So that's what, what I want to do. It's basically the old rows for columns two and, and three. So the way we work with that, guys, is the following. So I want from A, Consider all rows and just columns two and three. Okay, guys. So this means from my matrix A, consider all rows, but just columns A, A columns two and three. This is a comma. Okay, so this is the way, guys, that you, you tell MATLAB every row. So now imagine that from A, I just want all the columns of the last row. How do we do that? So let's call this A3. It's going to be from A. I want the last row. And from here, I want every single column. All right, guys? Let's create A4, for example, and I want to join two, two matrices. I want to join A, and on bottom of that, I want to put B. Okay, so remember how A and B are, A and B. So this is A and B. So what I want, A, A well, A4 is going to be all A, and you, you want to append B on the bottom of that. So this is going to be, we call A4. And what I want is to create a new matrix, do you agree? And this new matrix is going to have all the elements of A. And how do I tell MATLAB to put on the bottom the, the V, what I need to use? What I need to use, guys, semicolon, do you agree? A semicolon B. So what I'm saying is MATLAB, take that A and then on bottom of that put B.
Do you agree? Now, guys, what I want is, is the following. So I have my A4, and I want you to do the following exercises. So you have A4. It's simply one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So what I want is A5, <clears throat> A5 to be Three, six, nine, twelve, two, five, eight, eleven, one, four, seven, ten. So basically, this one here goes here. So I'm shifting the, the columns. Okay. A6, I want from A4, I want this to be 10, 11, 12. Seven, eight, nine, four, five, six, one, two, three. So basically, here what I'm doing is I'm I'm moving the the top goes to the bottom and then you you, you move move move. Okay. So what I want is to move column one to be column, uh, sorry, column three to be column one, column two to stay, and column one to be column three. Correct. So what I want to to shift is the columns, and I want to keep all rows. Correct. So I can call this A five. Someone, some ideas. Uh, it's A five equals A four. A4, yes, I'm going to take the data from A4, yep. And uh, the two dots, everything from the rows? Everything from rows, correct. And comma, uh, brackets, and then you do three, two, one. Yes, uh, yeah, you know, three, two, one, correct? It works or not? Should work. It works, right? Now, what is interesting, guys, is 
take a look to, can we simplify this one here? This is a sequence, right? Three, two, one. It is a sequence, correct or not? Every time that you see a sequence, you try to simplify this using a sequence. Because imagine if you have 100 uh -huh. columns, you cannot be doing 199, 98, et cetera. So what we can do is what? A sequence. What? How do we do the sequence? So remember, take a look. This is my sequence. I want to create this sequence. How do we? How do I create this sequence? Remember, it's always a start, a, the yeah. the change, and when do you want to end? Correct. Yeah, I don't so know. yeah, I want to start at three. Negative one, one. Maybe. And then, I don't know. Yeah, and then what? Remember, the increment is not necessarily necessarily positive. It can be negative also. So I want to to increment. My increment is what? By what? Guys, what is the increment? Negative one. Yeah, negative one. Correct, because it's going to be three minus one, two, two minus one, one, and I stop in position one. Correct, guys. Do you understand what the sequence does? It starts at three. The next number is going to be decreased by one, and the last number is going to be one. You got it, guys? All these tricks here are gonna are gonna help us a lot, guys, when we do serious programming. Because if you have one matrix of a three, what's that, a four times three, it's exactly as uh, that having a, a matrix 1,000 times 1,000. It is exactly the same. The techniques are exactly the same. Okay, so how do you do A5? Oh, no, sorry, A6. So A6, what is A6? So A6 is the, is the opposite. I want the first, sorry, the last row to be the first column, etc., etc., etc. Do you agree? So how do we do that? Can we, you just tell me, A6 equals... We always based on A4, right? So we are we continue basing our results on A4. So what do I do? Come on, guys. What, what do I do here? Uh, it's in the chat box. Oh. Okay. I have a, a, a6, a4, 4 minus 1 to 1, everything. So, okay. So, let's try that. I want this to be starting at 4, decreasing by 1, and stopping in 1. And I want to keep all columns. What do you think about this, guys? Make sense? Nicole? Yin, make sense? So this is a sequence that goes from four, decreasing by one, and it stops at one. And then we should have it. Okay. Now, sometimes you have your matrix and you don't care about a, a specific column. For example, from A6, I just want to delete the third column, okay? I want to delete the third column. So basically what I want from A6 is the first two columns. So what we can do here, guys, is A6 equals A6, everything comma two. Oh, sorry. Everything comma two. And I want this to be empty. Oh, no, it's, it's not two, it's, um, I said third, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's from A6, all rows, column three, empty. Got it? So what I'm doing is I'm simply disappearing the last one.
Okay, guys, makes sense to you. Okay, there are some mathematical functions also that are really important. Uh, for example, I, I, I have A6, okay, or let's call B. And what I want is to multiply B times nine. So every element of B times nine. That's easy, right? So it's gonna be B1 equals B times, no, not one, times three. So this is a scalar matrix uh, operations. When you have a scalar that applies to the, to the vector matrix, you simply do this stuff. And what it does, it simply multiplies element by element. Okay, so I can do, for example, B2 can be equal to B to the power two. Aha, here I have a problem. Because I cannot do this, this matrix multiplication. B is a one times three, one times three times one times three, in matrix algebra, you cannot do that. But what you can do is you can do an element by element operation. So when you have that dot here, guys, before the, the, the MATLAB command, it implies do one of, uh, sorry, one, uh, sorry, it's gonna be 10 to the power two, 11 to the power two, 12 to the power two. So this is an, an element by element, oops, an element by element operation. This this one here. Make sense? So let's go back to B4, for example. Oh, A4. Okay. There is a lot of opportunities, guys, in which we need to know the dimensions of one of my matrix. Okay. In this case, it's simple. It's a uh, four times three. But you know, you have a huge matrix and you know you want to know how many elements do I have. Okay? So basically what we can do is we can use the command that is called size of A4. When you just write a command size of a of a of a matrix. It will give you the rows and the columns. Size. Okay, this is another word, size. Now we can use size also with one input. The first input, when you write one, implies tell me the number of rows. And if you want to know the number of columns, simply two. Length. What is this one? It's another command, guys, that gives me the maximum of rows or columns. Got it? So now, question. So this is A4. I want to know the total number of, 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 uh, of elements that I have in my matrix. How do I do that? I want to know how many observations do I have in total. Of course, it's, it's four times three, right? Agree with me or not? How can you do that? Let's, let's call an ops. An ops is simply a name. Okay, guys, so how do we do this? With the things that we have learned, just remember, let's try to apply what we have 
learn. So how can I multiply? How can I know that I have twenty four observations? No, it's not a, three times twelve observations. Someone. Someone. I put it in the chat. Oh, let me check. Uh, yeah, do you agree? So I can compute this one here. So what Nicole is proposing, I simply say the size of A41, so this is the number of rows times the number of columns. Works with you guys? Do you understand that? Everyone understand this part here? Simple. Now, can we do the following? There is a MATLAB command that is called prod, product multiplication. And what I want is the product of size of A4. Okay, another way of doing that. So what prod does, size of A4 is going to give me two numbers. Do you agree? It's going to give me four and three, correct? And the prod multiplies all the elements in the parentheses. So it's going to multiply the four plus the three times the three, and then you get the 12. Make sense to you guys? Okay. So now what I want from you is the following. Where is my, this one here? Do you remember this function here, guys? This one here? Okay, this one here. So I, I want to create this function again. 3x squared plus 2z minus 4. Okay, now what I want x is to be in the interval 0, 10. I want, uh, let's say I want 20 observations. And I want z to be between minus 5 and 2. And I also want this to be 20 observations. Got it? So what I want from you, basically, guys, is give me the values of y when we have this sequence. So when, when x is 0 and z is minus 5, the value of y is something, etc. When the value of uh, y, x is 10, and the value of z is 2, the value of y is something. OK? Go ahead, guys. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Why is it 20 observations if there's no. only 10 no. values in the... No, no, no. But remember, 20 observations, you can go 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 1.5, etc. Okay. So remember, okay. the trick here is that you have 20 observations, okay? Then if you want to do the the, the sequence with the dots, ah, it's going to be very tricky. Do you remember? Because you need to take the maximum minus the minimum divided by number of observations plus 1. Just to, to, if you want to use, if you want to do zero to 10, you need to give me a, a number here, do you agree? And that, that's a, it's gonna be a kind of a pain. Got it? So instead of, instead of using this trick here, what do you use? When you have observation, the exact observation, what command do we use? Of course, you, you just um, learned it's, it. it's the other one, yeah. Yes, yes, that's the one. 
You see, that's the beauty of having the linear space. You don't need to be caring about what is the exact incre in increments. Simply put the number. Okay. Okay, one minute, guys, to do that. Do it. You, you know, at the beginning, it's a kind of a tricky, but once you put this in your mind, you're going to see how beautiful this works later. Ready? You you help me with the with the data, guys. So I need to create x is going to be uh, a sequence, right? So this is going to go. Do you understand what I'm using in the space? Correct, guys. Is because I have only a, a specific number of uh, observations. Then I need to write y, and no, sorry, z. That is going to have is going to go between minus five and what number, guys? Minus two, two and twenty observations. You agree? And after that, we have my y. Uh, my y was equal to what? Three x squared. Oh yeah, so it's going to be a uh, three times x squared plus plus what, guys? Two z. Eight z. Two z. Ah, uh, two z minus four. Okay, so let's see what happens here. It works or not? It works or not? Oops. It doesn't work. So why it doesn't work? Because it doesn't satisfy the matrix properties of multiplication of power. 
Got it? But what we can do is, you know, what I want to do indeed is, is, is every x to the power of two, do you agree? So how do I do element by element? It's like that. And also what I want is to multiply, well, let's take a look to what happens there. Because the two is an scalar, so the scalar multiplies z. So every single value of z is multiplied by, by two. That's easy. But this one here is x, I'm, I'm the, the exponent of, sorry, the power of every x is going to be to the power of two. So if my x is this one, x to the power of two. Oops to the power of two is simply this one. They are not zero, they are uh, they are very small and it's not 62 to the power of two. These are the numbers. Do you agree? So basically my Y values are these ones. Do you agree with me guys or not? Yep. And basically, after that, you can do sequences. Sorry, you can do plots. We can do sensitivity analysis. We're going to use this a lot for sensitivity analysis. For example, I want to see what is going to be my return if I if I can make between 2% and 5%. So what is going to be my expected return? Got it? If I use risk, I can say, OK, if I'm in this range of return, of um, expected returns and expected volatilities, what is going to be my expected uh, final payoff, for example? Okay, right? we're gonna use that in a, in different different ways. Okay, guys. So from now, uh, I gave you. Give me one second. I think I send you. Yeah. So let let me explain you this. This is one of the things you need to do for for our next class. Okay, you you have this. Okay, so what I want you to, this is my Z value. So this is 1.1, 1 .1, 2.1, 3.1, 2, 1.2. So I, I, I don't know why I use commas here. Yeah, this should be dots, okay? 2.2, 3.2. Uh, yeah, so this is my, this the, the first one represents sugar, the second one rice, and the third one flour. The first column is kilos, and the second column is, is prices. Do you agree? So you have a matrix here that you have quantities and prices. Make sense to you? So the first thing you need to do is basically type the C value into a C. Then what I want you to tell me is the number of columns, the number of rows, the total number of kilos. Uh, what I want to create is Y1 is only kilos, Y2 is only prices, uh, Y3 is what? Kilos and prices. Oh yeah, we change simply the floor. I want to be first, price second, and sugar later. I want you to create Y4, that is simply the multiplication between kilos and prices. Uh, then I want, once you multiply kilos and prices, your, your three times two becomes a three times one, correct? And then I want you to sum the, the complete, the, to sum the, the number of, uh, this is a cost. And then I want to change the price of sugar by three, uh, delete uh, the raw fluor. That's it. It's very simple. Make sense to you? Very simple. This is for, for next class, guys. We're going to do this very quickly. Just for you to practice. You need to get used to this, this type of uh, exercise. Very simple exercises. Uh, okay. So let me go back to my paint. Okay, guys, so let's do a new one. Let's talk about 3D arrays. Okay, let's do 3D arrays. So basically a 3D array, guys, looks like this. So you have rows, you have columns, Oops, no, this is this is ugly. Wrong. And then you have faces. Got it? So if my array is called X, 
is going to be x is going to be rows, columns, and faces. So this is the structure of an array, guys. Rows, columns, and then how many matrices do you have? Got it? So what we are going to be assuming, guys, is that we have the following. So rows are going to be number of years. So we're going to have five years of data. The columns, is going. we are going to have three individuals. And the faces, we're going to have only two faces. First face is going to be income. And the second phase is going to be savings. Got it? So we are going to create a matrix, and an array, basically. Five years of data, three, uh, three individuals. And then the first phase is going to be income. The second phase is going to be savings. Make sense to you? OK. So let, let's create whatever. So let's create, I will create, where's my hero log? Let me move, where's my mouse now? Yeah, let me move this one here. So what I will do, guys, is my, my editor. I will clean my workspace. I don't need, I don't need anything like this. And clean my data. Oopsie. No, I don't want to do this. Okay, so what I want to do now, let's let's create simple numbers, okay? So let's call my, my variable is going to be called panel data. So this is a, a name. And I will just copy numbers, guys, that you can you can copy, okay? So this is going to be 100,000, 100,000. Uh, So this is the first year of data. This is the income of individual one, two, and three for the first year of data. Then I have a, second year of data. Third year of data. Fourth year of data. So what happened? Hundred thousand. One twenty-five, thirty-five, hundred eighty. Oh, sorry. This one here, this is all columns, uh, all columns, oh, sorry, all columns for rows, first phase. So this is the way I'm assigning. So I'm using all the, all the rows, all the columns of phase one. Got it? So this is the way I'm assigning my Yeah, can you copy this one here where I will do the second one? So now this is the second one.
Okay. So these are the numbers that you can enter. So try to enter the same number so we can all have the same results later. Ready, guys? So let's do something here. Do you understand what we have, right? So this implies the first column is individual one, the second column individual two, and the third column individual uh, three. So every of these, co of these rows represents one year. So this was the first year the second and the fifth year is the last one. So the first column, the, sorry, the first phase represents income and the second phase represents savings. So let's take a look to this guy. So this guy has $100,000, he started making $100,000, then next year, 125, 180, 300, 425. This is a extremely successful guy, right? In terms of money, of course. And then what you can see is that this is a uh, savings. See, he started saving $35,000, 58, and he ended up uh, saving $354,000, okay? And it's opposed to this guy that started at $41,000 and ended after five years on $53,000. Uh, he savings $1,000 and end up uh, 8480 at the end of fifth year, okay? Make sense? So now, if I want to see the complete matrix, guys, uh, array, what I do is I simply say, simply do a uh, panel data, and it will present everything. Now, what I want from you is the following. So you, you do this, okay, very quickly. What I want from you is the following. Yeah, I need you to tell me the income for last three years of individual one. I want you to tell me the savings of first two years of individual, individual three. I want you to tell me the
in this order, okay? Individual two, one. And not, not salaries, income. Okay, guys. Okay, let's say 10 minutes to do this stuff. So we have created already the matrices. So now what we need is, I, I want you to answer these questions. And you can name these as, a, a, you know, different names, okay? Income for last three years. So let's call this well, A. This is going to be matrix B. So what I want from you is give me the, the answers and name them A, B, etc. B equals, C equals, can be, a, these letters can be matrices, column rows, sorry, column matrices, row matrices, I don't know. You need to tell me. Could you just briefly go back to the the second set of data? Yes, here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, just scroll up a little bit. Oh, this one. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, remember this one is this one, huh? So you just type these numbers. Oh, okay. Semicolon these numbers. Semicolon. Yep. Yeah. Okay.
Hey, five more minutes, guys. Please do it. Otherwise, if you don't do this, you're never going to understand how this works. Please do. And even if you fail, fail, it doesn't matter. Do it. So I will go back to the to this one here so you can take a look at what, what I'm requesting. Let's do the first one, okay? So at least I want to know that you are in the right direction. So what I want is the income of the three year, last three years of I1, correct? Income is in the first one. So what I want is, let's call this A. And what is the matrix we're going to be using, guys? Well, in this case, array. This is the array we're going to be using, right? So what do we go here? What do we put here? We want the three last years of income. So. Income comes in number of rows, correct? Do you agree with me? So what I want here is to go from three to what? Five. To five. Okay. Then we're gonna we're gonna do some tricks later. Okay, three to five. What else? Does the, the, the columns represents individuals? Which individual they are looking for? We are looking for. One. One. So basically, just consider column one. 
So take the, the last three years of individual one. Now, what do we want? Income or savings? Income. Income. So one stays, correct? Guys, you agree? Here we go. Now, one way to do this faster, guys. <clears throat> okay, three, there is nothing to do. So you can use a command, MATLAB command that is called end. Got it? So basically, this is going to tell me that from three to the last row. Got it? End is very useful. Another way of doing this stuff, guys, what you can say is, I, I, you know, because five is easy to count, but if you don't know how many rows do you have, it's going to be a pain counting. So what you can do is you can do size of a panel data, right? What? Number of rows? Do you see that? What is this one here? It's going to give you the number of rows of panel data. Agree with me or not, guys? So what I'm tell, trying to tell you is try to use as, as less numbers as possible because the program, if you do five, then your data changes to 10, you're done. Do you agree? But if you use commands like this, and it doesn't matter. If, if at the beginning it was five rows and you have 10, and it's at the end. Also, this one here, the size of panel, the size of panel data one is also capturing the, the actual dimension of the data. You see that? So that's why, guys, yo, what is the end? What I put in here? Here we go. Make sense? So let's try to look for automatic ways of, of making the machine think. Numbers are an issue, you know, always, because if you change one number, and the data changes, then you're going to be in trouble. Once we start programming, guys, we need to be smart enough to create, to, to tell the machine, adapt yourself, adjust yourself to new data, etc. Got it? So that's why this type of commands, the size, the type of end, etc., are extremely useful. Got it? So instead of using this one here, try to use this type of commands. Hold this one. Make sense to everyone? Okay, so now you know how to do that. So these are the, the last three years of income of this guy. Number one, individual number one. Okay, so here we go. Continue. Okay, two minutes to do the, the second one, guys. That one is easy, right? It's basically the similar to, to number one. Number three, income of I1 and I2 is also is easy. Savings of I3, I2, and I1. So it's basically I'm shifting the, the order. Three, two, one. Percentage savings per year, per, percentage savings per year, and individuals. Okay. 
So here you need to do some, some simple math. Let's do B. So it's savings of the first two years of individual three. Okay, so let me call this one B. I'm using panel data and the savings uh, of, of individual, the first two years, right? So this should be, well, this is easy. One to two. Which individual guys? Individual three and uh, savings or income? Savings. Savings, two. What do you think about this stuff? Take the first two rows for individual three, but it's savings. Agree with me or not, guys? These are the savings of individual two for the first two years of his career. Are you with me? Perfect. So let's let's do the, the next one. Let me write something here. Okay, uh, E is the income of individual one and individual two. So C. You tell me guys, C is what? What years do I want? Guys, what, what years do we want? One, two, five. So everything, right? So remember everything. You can do one, two, five if you want, but this one here is already for MATLAB everything. Two dots, everything. So all the years, what, what I want? Which individuals? One and two. One and two. So what we can do is we can do this, one comma two. This is very small number. It's not a big deal. And what I want is what? Income or savings? Income. Income. Everyone is with me, guys. Do you, do you see this one here? So if you can do this with a small matrix, you can do this with tons of data. It's exactly the same. It is exactly the same, guys. Okay, so what is the next one? Uh, what I've done. Okay, savings of individual three, two, and one. So this is basically shifting the, the order. So this is going to be D, 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 D. And I want all rows. Here I need to do something. And savings is number two. So what I need to do here, guys, is what? So I, I want to, to move the columns, right? Individual three is going to be the first one, individual two, and individual one. So how do I do that? The smart way. Three, negative one, one. Yep. Agree with that, you or not? 
So what it will do is it will create a sequence of three, two, and one. Exactly the, what we want, right? Third column, second column, and first column. Here we are. Do you get these numbers, guys? Everyone? Okay, so let's take a look to uh, five. Okay, now we have percentage of savings per year for individuals, for all the individuals. Okay, percentage of savings, well, this should be with respect to the income, no? With respect to income. So I want to, to see, guys, what is the percentage of income that is saved? That's what I want. And let's call this E. So what I need to do? Uh, uh, everything year. from rows and columns. Okay, so everything, so all the years for all individuals. Okay. Oh. What else? And then uh, I'm thinking two divided by one uh, times 100%. Okay, so uh, I, I, I do this I know, two I divided by one, or I need to do... Does that work? I don't know. No. Or maybe you can do two and then... Yes. Uh, and then start all over again, but... With one, correct? Yeah. Now, remember, guys, I need to use a dot divide oh, okay. because I want to do one by one. So basically what I want... Where is my data? Here, Here is my data. So what I want is to divide this number here by this number here. Do you agree, guys? I want to divide the second number here with this number here. So any, if I want this one here, I need to divide this number here divided by this number here. Correct, that's what I want. This is a percentage savings with respect to the income. So, and, and this is what we do here. This is element by element. So first position with first position, second position, second position, etc. cetera. Oh, oh, this one is not two, this is one, this one is one. Make sense to you? Nice, make sense to you? Uh, of course, you can multiply this by 100 later. Well, yeah, is there a quick way of doing it, or this is? Uh, no, this is a way. No, there is no way you can do this in a different way faster. But this is logic, right? So you can take pieces of the matrix and divide, multiply, whatever you want. And that's what we want to do in, in, in the near future. We want to be able to, to select data and operate data. Data is crucial, guys. You need to manage data. Make sense to you guys? So how do you interpret this number? Someone. Uh, individual two saved 44% of his income on the fourth year. Like exactly, that. exactly. Everyone agrees with that? Guys, do you agree? Make sense? It's very simple, right? Good. Okay, so let's do the, the next one. Hey, where's the next one? Hey, where's this one? Percentage of income of individual three versus individual one. 
So basically we want to see the ratio of individuals three income versus individuals one's income. Okay, so we want to see how how fa how far these two guys are. Okay, one minute. So what I want is what percentage. So individual, the income of uh, individual three as a percentage of individual income of individual one. Okay, so how do we do that? This is going to be very similar to the one that we have done right right now, right? So this is going to be F. I want the, the all the all the years, but only individual three, correct? Income. We're talking about income, and I want this to be as a percentage of all for all years, but for individual one and also income. What do you think about this one here? Then? Make sense? Is it right? Oh yes, that's right. So they started more or less 50-50, you know, 41% of individual uh, individuals three income was uh, the individual's one income, but then suddenly individual one simply, and the other guy simply stayed kind of flat. Do you agree guys? This guy, perhaps individual number one, perhaps he became a CEO of a corporation or something like that. Agree with me? Now, guys, and, and this is right. I remember doing this example. Have you heard about Piketty? In, in, in some, some of you have heard about Piketty? No? Now, Piketty was very, it's a, it's a very famous French economist that what he's arguing is that indeed uh, capital gains are stronger than real market gains, real product gains. So imagine. So if, uh, I don't know, Amazon is growing, real growth is 2%. If you invest in Amazon in a stock, in the stock market, you can make 10%. Make sense to you? So Amazon growth, real actual growth is 2%. But if you invest Amazon in the in the stock markets, you can make 10%. This makes sense or not? Should not. In theory, this should this is what is called the, the fundamental value. In theory, they should be very close to each other. So what he's arguing is that this number is going up because there is an inflation in the um, in the in the stock markets. There is a lot of people just trading because they want to trade. They have no idea about the, the fundamental value. And so this is growing fantastically high. Now, what is the issue with that? What is the issue with that? A bunch of issues. Okay, this can be creation of a bubble, etc. But his main issue was more a, a kind of a social issue. He was arguing the problem is that who has access to these markets? 
who puts his savings accounts in the stock markets versus just a, a regular bank account. Basically, rich people put more money into these equity markets, do you agree? Because they have access to these equity markets. Poor people don't have access to that. So basically, the richer the richer are, are getting rich. So this is his, his main complaint. There is a lot of discussions on that, but that, that's the main point. And the other point that is true, guys, is that the more you make, the more you save. It makes sense to you or not? This is related to the disposable income thing. Unless you are a crazy guy and every time that you make more money, you buy more things. You know, now you had a Volkswagen, now you have a Volvo, now you have a Ferrari. Well, in that case, you're, you, you, this, is, this doesn't apply to you. But in general, the more money you make, the more you save. And what is the reason of that? What is the economic reason of that, guys? Association, guys. You know what? Remember the utility function? It's like, like a utility function looks like that. So what happens is at the very beginning, you need a lot, but eventually you do your, your needs start decreasing. Right? Food is one example. If you're extremely hungry, extremely hungry, just one apple, the value of one apple is huge. Do you agree? But then if you have two apples, three apples, five apples, 10 apples, then the, the value of the marginal one, the margin, the value of the 10th apple is what? It's almost zero. Because you don't want to eat more. Make sense to you guys? Okay, and it's exactly the same. So the more you have, so imagine if you make $1 million a year, okay, you cannot eat more than, let's say 250, going every single day to the best restaurant, something like that, got it? So that's why the more you make in, in, gen in general, the more you save. So this is basically this idea. You know, the more you make, the more you, you save. Make sense to you guys? Okay, so let's do that the last question. Yes, hey, what is this one? A total savings for each individual for all years accumulated. So I just want to know what is how much have saved every every one of them. So I want to know this is individual one, this is individual two. I just want to to sum. How do I do that? So I call this FG. I call one of these ones. Yeah, I will call this one as a G. So what I do, guys. I want the savings for every every year, every individual savings or savings, yes. For so the, what I'm doing here is what? Just extracting it. Yeah, so what I'm I'm doing is I'm extracting it. So now what I want is to sum. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, so you know if you have a doubt, just do help sum. Remember the help command. And take a look. The help command tells you, oh, I can sum by columns. Sorry, by rows, and I can sum by columns. Got it? Make sense? So let's take a look to that. What happens then? So let me go back to this one here. And what I will do is I will do sum by rows. This is a predefined MATLAB command. Here we go. So this is the total saved per individual. Got it? Now, if you want to analyze the total saved per year, okay? This should be the total save per year. So the economy saved this money. If these three individuals make the economy. Year one, year two, year three. How much was created? How much was saved by the overall economy, guys? How much was saved by the overall economy? Assuming that these three guys are the economy. So I want the sum of the sum, do you agree? Sorry, can I do this stuff or not? Do you understand? So I sum 
Uh, but I also can do the sum of the sums here. Uh, this is the colors. Got it, guys? That, that You're going to learn all, all these small tricks and create your own program. So, but I, I want you to be sure that, that you get these basics. You know, there's two or two and a half classes of, on basics. After that, you're going to be able to program your own programs. You're going to see that. Questions? Okay. The second thing that you need to do, guys, is the second part here. It's basically, it's basically based on what we have done, but more questions. Make sense to you guys? So this one here is basically based on what we have done in, in a couple of minutes ago. A couple of minutes ago. Questions? We can stop here for today. Make sense? So next next class, we're going to do some, some uh, financial examples based on what we have learned up to now. Questions, guys? No questions? Okay, so please do this for, for next class. Next class, we're going to start working with these examples very quickly, and then we continue moving very quickly too. Okay, guys? Have a good night, and see you in a, well, in four days, five days, more or less. Thank you, guys. Uh, Take care. Thank yeah, you. Professor, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abdi, you, yeah, you can stay here. Let me turn off the... Thank you.